What is going on guys? Wiser here and I'm coming to you with the recap of one of the last wars for 2.0. Uh, this is a random matchup against Clan called Apathy. Uh, we never heard of them before, but uh, look like they're a very organized clan. I think they had like 294 wins, level 11 clan. Um, so yeah, we we're uh, we we're on the full offensive for this one because we weren't really sure what to expect. Um, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, I literally just got in a couple hours ago from Chicago Live. Uh, before uh, I like to talk about this a little bit before. I jump in this recap and my voice is kind of gone because of the weekend, so I wanted to mention that as well. Uh, so bear with me on this one. And uh, yeah, you know I'm really I'm really tired, but wanted to get this in before I lost the replays. Obviously, been away for a few days in Chicago, like I mentioned uh, for Chicago Live. Just awesome, you know. Uh, one of the best times I've had in my life, just meeting all these people I've been clashing with for such a long time and. Um, it was just such a cool experience. I don't even know how to describe it. Um, would re definitely recommend anyone anyone tries to make the effort to go out next time. Uh, not only was it a good time, but we raised twelve thousand uh, dollars for the charity. Uh, just an absolute fantastic job by the guys that put it on over there. You know, some guys did so much work putting this on. I hope you guys, everyone appreciates that. Um, you know, guys like Warren and Red Cloud, I watched them run their asses off. And just huge shouts out to those guys. It was just, they, they did so much work this weekend and it was completely worth it. And I just want to say thank you personally. Um, and there's some other guys, you know, I, it took, I, you know, we, we on the leadership panel, we had a question about what makes a good leader. And one of the things is you, you can't do it yourself, right? Just like events like this, you can't do it yourself. There's all, so many people came together and made this happen. It was just absolutely awesome. I mean, uh, Koopa Troopa, <laughs> long day for that guy. He streamed the whole thing from start to finish. Just absolutely fantastic job. Obviously, you know, the man himself, Jake, was there. Uh, finally got to meet him, actually, which was a pretty cool experience. We had a really good long talk, but a whole lot of things, actually. Um, and just an outstanding guy, you know. Uh, I can't say any more about uh, about Jake, but honestly, that guy cares about the future of this game and is doing what he can to help. And I hope everyone appreciates that as well. Um, you know, Power Bang, uh, Clash with Ash, Ash, uh, Ash Lane was there. Uh, awesome. Just both also st amazingly stand-up individuals. Um, Ash was like one of the coolest guys I've ever met. Uh, same with PB. You know, PB and I were uh, kind of chatting when we were on the leadership panel and had some other conversations. He was all over the place. Um, you know, and without these guys there, a lot of this wouldn't have been made possible at all. So uh, just wanted to say that. Uh, hope I didn't really miss anyone. I know there's tons of people. Obviously, you know, Jake's wife was there helping out. Wife Ed, I know, um, greeted me at the door. So <clears throat> just wanted to say that, um, you know, there really was, I met leadership and clans from all over, you know, Duce and the guys from, you know, Garsk from War Wales and all these guys um, were just awesome uh, to see. You know, I got got to meet uh, a lot of members of CS, uh, War Wales, like I said, Power CUC, my boy JP was there, which is awesome. And Zed Bear, shouts out to you guys. Zed Bear, you know how to party, my friend. Um, and obviously, you know, I, I met a lot, I, I met, I learned a lot actually, because I didn't know that the Clash with Ash family has eight clans in it. That's pretty crazy. So there was a lot of people from that clan as well. Um, anyways, fantastic weekend. I just wanted to say, guys, really consider going out for the next one or or any of these events because they're all going to be very similar. But, um, you know, check out some of the pictures on the Twitter. And, and that's all I can really say. But fantastic job. Thank you for putting that on because uh, it was an unreal experience. Anyhow, let's jump on over here. Enough blabbing about that. Of course, I disconnected because I talked, to, talked for too long. Let's load this up. <laughs> and check this out yes that dark contingent war will be coming very soon as soon as i get a little bit of rest i'm gonna get that one in tomorrow <clears throat> so 68 stars for apathy now they they did their best 53 60 attacks they did miss a few they had a couple lower town hall eights because they did have a couple extra sort of newer town hall 11s um you know but like i said like, they did their best uh, these guys are a very organized clan you could tell uh, war all the time, 294 wins. That's nothing to nothing to scoff at. So apathy, thank you for the war. Uh, 2.0 just was on a tear though. Like there was no stopping us this war, no matter what. Uh, we had a really nice 11 versus 11 triple to show you there. Uh, 10 versus 10 triple to show you in here. And let's just jump right on down and check out a few of these Town Hall 9 replays. What was the first one I want to show? Oh, 21 skipped it. Good old mouthpiece, our fearless leader. <clears throat> you 
going in just classic just a very classic attack you know against a very classic anti three star base uh a few of these attacks I'm going to show are HGH or sort of the, the version of this new crazy bowler attack at Town Hall 9 that is just extremely overpowered. And we'll get to that when I get there. But I just wanted to show this attack because this is such an awesome, um, you know, basic Govaho. I love it. And uh, just don't remember, don't overthink the base. A lot of times... You can still do you can still do these very very um, <laughs> old school strats, which which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that because they they work and we know they work because they've been tried and tested. Anyhow, uh, CC's pulled out. Everything is uh, basically shredded in this core. Uh, has to hit the ability on that king to get on over <clears throat> to that defensive king. Finally goes in there, getting uh, getting the rest of that core mopped up and start sending in the hogs. Just sprinkling around the queen chamber. Started a couple at uh, three o'clock there. Few more in from 12 o'clock using that giant to do a little bit of tanking. Just great job with that. Gets that wizard tower down. It's only you know this one compartment with a couple cannons and a uh, arch tower down at nine o'clock that he has to worry about. Gets that heal down, knocks that arch tower down. Bam, bam, bam. Oh man, did I screw my shoulder up on the drive? I don't know. Oh, the bob. <laughs> Almost loses all his hogs, but he's going to have just enough to take down that arch tower. Oh, my bad. Loses them on that bomb. I must have not seen that at the end of this replay when I first watched it. Anyhow, I was going to say, I honestly ripped my shoulder to shreds. I don't know what I did. Um, I don't know if it was like I slept weird but or pinched a nerve. My whole right shoulder and down my back is really, really sore after that drive. It's about a five-hour drive to Chicago from where I live, so. Beautiful. It's tree in the bag for mouthpiece. Very classic attack. I love it. Uh, um, 18. Let's check it. Good old Caddick. Caddick has just mastered this HGH and is wrecking bases like nothing with it. So in they go, right? Get those giants down. Get those healers down. Try and split them up a little bit so you can sort of heal two groups of giants as you sort of two-finger them at the base. Two-finger them does, has two effects. First of all, it gets your giants down faster. Second of all, it's going to allow you to create a funnel, right? Like, if you just drop all the giants at the middle, you're not going to be able to create the wide funnel, which is a huge, huge, huge piece of this HGH attack. If you do not create... A large enough funnel like you're gonna see kind of here almost the the bowler start to walk up there almost was a good chance that they went up this way which would have really sucked cc troops kind of pull them in which is good queen's in they're gonna mop up the baby dragon the uh, balloons under that poison drops a couple ways up top but i would have funnel tried to funnel that off because that to me was a scary moment but the bowlers went back in. So side relief for Caddick there. All the bowlers go right on. They start smashing everything. Giants have now walked in, triggered a DGB there. So that is perfect because that is another threat to those bowlers. Any sort of bomb action and the bowlers are in big trouble. Poison down on that defensive queen though. She gets smashed in the face by a bunch of bowlers. No problem down she goes. In comes some hogs. Just kind of sprinkling two at a time on these defenses. Might have even wanted to drop a couple here. Oh yeah, maybe once that arch tower locks on. Yeah, I would have dropped. Boom, Caddick, you're just the man exactly what i said or was about to say you should do you did <clears throat> just sprinkling them in where you need them right tried to protect that wizard a little bit ended up losing them because there was just a little too much dps and everything sort of wandered away but uh no big deal king's about to burst through that and uh still has that ability so he's going to rage it up get the those defenses taken care of expo's getting tanked by the giants in the core so no big deal bowlers and the queen are sort of working around the base get three hogs in on that cannon so just perfect Really, the only threat is this Expo Arch Tower compartment. Cleanup's already going around the base. Bam, bam, bam. Down it goes, and definitely a treat in the bag. This attack is just ridiculous. So ridiculous. <laughs> no offense to you, Caddick, but it's just the bowlers. It's just, just the bowlers. And here, I'm going to show you why. It's it's not... It, the Giants are good and make it are one of the more optimal choices, mainly because they're slow so but we're going to check something a little bit different here in this next attack uh is it this one i know i don't think it was this one. Oh yeah it is this one so in sort of the same fashion um he's going to use sort of the valks in front of the bowlers now you got to be very careful with that because the valks are a lot quicker than the giants so that's what i was going to say it kind of makes the giants optimal but if they're on the right base uh, you can definitely sort of switch up your tanking units you can take some extra healers like grady took seven healers on this uh, raid 
So looking good up to this point, wall break is going to be successful. <clears throat> Walk this queen around and into, into this compartment here. Take out that uh, clan castle. Down goes the wall. In she goes. Nice job on the funneling whiz there. Just get that barracks down. But uh, she was going to target it anyways. But if she had taken a step of that arch tower and then went up, might have been a problem. But <clears throat> whiz is going to stand there and get some free work done on those buildings up there. CC comes out. Poison goes down. It's like two baby dragons in there and a bunch of archers. So quickly the archers go down to the poison. Uh, Queen's going to knock down those baby dragons. We're talking about this today. If you put three baby dragons, uh, someone was suggesting that. And... I don't know if that's uh, that's the best. Sorry, I don't know if that is uh, the best choice. I mean, you don't get the rage, but the idea was to drop the poison, and by the time you get to the last baby drag, the poison is going to be fading. But I just don't think it's enough. Anyways, look look at this huge funnel CAD created. Bowler is nice and high on that edge of the funnel, all the way around. No worries. Or I, sorry, Grady, I called you CAD. <laughs> <laughs> anyhow huge funnel right and just has to work these bowlers through the base down rages him up gonna smash through the wall start getting the stuff on the outside as 10 hogs he's just gonna start to sprinkle in here uh, slowly queen's in there doing a little bit of work gonna take down that expo rage is keeping her alive sweeper was giving a little bit of trouble but that rage down is no problem she's gonna work through that wall get a little benefit from the rage on that as well started sprinkling hogs in to protect the king a little bit and that valkyrie's got down there um, so it's sort of the same thing. I mean, the bowlers kind of got stuck on the wall. And the Valks are starting to now separate, but the healers are locked onto the bowler, so it's perfect. Uh, Valks are getting really good value, taking care of all the buildings nice and quickly. Sort of a mix of uh, fast and slow-moving units here. <clears throat> Sends the rest of his hogs to that Tesla up at kind of uh, 11 o'clock there. Heal spell goes down. Going to heal those right back up. They're going to get on over to the Arch Tower. There's only a few of these outer defenses to go, and there's still bowlers and wizards and hogs and valks and kings and queens all over the base. Grady just absolutely smashes it. Nice job, my friend. That's tree in the back. Noise, noise, noise. Um, man, I'm losing my voice. All right, so let's check out this T 10 versus 10. Yeah, of course it's bowlers, but it's what it is right now, guys. 18 of them to be in fact um i forget what he brings in his cc here uh but the double freeze double rage look at like look at this just perfectly one for one trades mini for all these trash buildings up here really nice job and in two seconds boom the funnel is created <laughs> just not not a good choice on those building placements for this guy, but uh, ice really exposes it. A couple bowlers on the outside, right? Just going to start doing some cleanup work. Really wants to work that funnel. Rest of them are going to go right up into this core, smash through this town hall, take down that queen. In they go. Still has four healers he hasn't dropped. I think he wanted to uh, wait. He didn't want the healers out front. He wanted the healers kind of on the back of the bowlers and let the giants sort of do their tanking, but... Um, not steal the healing value, right? Bowler's uh, in behind, starting to smash through the Infernos. Once the Infernos go down, it is basically GG for this base, and they are now down right before that freeze wears off. Nice job on that one too, Ice. Still has four balloons. He's going to start sort of sprinkling in on these uh, these units on the outside because uh, all the air defenses are down except this one at uh, 7 o'clock. <clears throat> My horse voice... Nice, just the queen almost died. There still is the ability as well, and the queen's going to hit it right now, I believe. Nope. <clears throat> Send, oh, the CC full of miners. That's right, I do remember this now. CC full of miners in at 9 o'clock. Uh, time might have been a bit of an issue, but the miners are gonna, just going to start funneling through all these buildings. Does lose the, uh, the remainder of those balloons to a red mine and a wizard tower trap. <clears throat> no big deal. Lose a couple miners to a spring trap. So start they start to pitter out a little bit as the queen gets stuck on the wall here. I believe doesn't take down the arch tower in time. Nope. Uh, but they did a little bit of work. Probably not the best, best value on that. Um, I might have even used the miners on the entry. I'm not sure. But anyhow, uh, Queen is going to be a superhero at this point. I believe this raid probably was super close on time. The Queen's had to beat through a couple sets of walls now. <clears throat> Here comes another one. But tree in the bag is imminent. The minions do work. Queen steps up, helps out. Bam, bam, bam. Beautiful. <laughs> Ice squeaks one out. Nice job, my friend. 
go in and check out guns on number four. It's 11 versus 11. Uh, so this base is uh, kind of a good example of what is not going to be good versus bowlers. It has max or a lot of lot of max defenses in there. Maybe all like not town hall 11s, but town hall 10 defenses. Um, but there's a few things about bowlers that make them troublesome. Now they seem to have a range longer than any unit and a sight range, I should say. So with that being said you really need to over exaggerate the funnels uh you're going to see how this base gets hit and obviously the funneling it on the outside is very easy so when you're base building uh, trying to base build and defend against bowlers you want to make those funnels as difficult as possible um, these ones unfortunately for this guy are very very easy uh, guns is really going to exploit that you're going to walk his queen right in here and pull out the cc and create one side of the funnel and then just send the bowlers in and with one jump spell the whole base is is accessible and you're going to see how it uh is the ultimate demise of this town hall 11 bowler style so let's get this times two going queen's going to go down break into the wall nice and easily no trash no nothing no big deal now she can also reach uh all of these defenses right there there there's no space in between the buildings not not defenses but buildings so she is going to get all of this stuff and be able to create a nice perfect funnel uh, for everything to either go in the core or up the left side of this base uh so poison goes down kind of the it was to make sure the loon died but even though she targeted the loon first because the clan castle was close enough but no big deal uh, minions come out do a little bit of work on her here uh, but very good patience on the queen ability takes out the very last minion then hits the ability when he's uh, locked onto that uh, gold storage, takes it down quickly, gets way better value out of the ability than if he had just kind of panicked when the pup's locked on and a very quick rage goes down, helps take care of that queen healer right back up. As you can see, like I said, the funnel is basically created here. Now, nice wall break, gonna let her back into this. She's, she's gonna now join the party in the ring here. Uh, so it goes ahead and sends the golems uh, or golem from the uh, sort of eight, eight nine o'clock position should have maybe tried to spread those wizards out a little better. Uh, they all died to a mortar when they stepped up to try and take out the trash buildings, but whatever. Um, so the bowlers are going to do a little bit of a split, but you're going to find out very quickly that under rages uh, with that grand warden in there helping out, they're just a badass beasts. Like they're just ripping this core apart. <clears throat> single target inferno over there um not really doing much against these bowlers just one at a time trying to target and they end up smashing down that second inferno smash down that defensive king see you later and there's not that much left of this base to go right it's got uh the queen doing work with the healers on the outside there's nothing that's really going to stop her so it's only a matter of time at this point he still has a pack of maybe seven six or seven bowlers coming up to the 12 o'clock spot there now and just sort of working their way towards each other base is definitely done for beautiful treat in the bag for guns <clears throat> all right so like i said I am exhausted. Drove for uh, slept two hotels. Tenors are driving in the last couple days, so I am gonna call it quits. But uh, hope uh, hope you guys enjoyed the recap. And uh, yeah, like I said, Chicago Live was awesome. <laughs> That'll do it here for your wisdom from Wiser. Just trying to help you bag that next tree star. Till then, I'm out.